Hello everybody and welcome to part one of my SSD upgrade. And what I will be doing in part one is showing you and unboxing the uh, the new hardware that I have to install. In part two I will be installing the hardware into my system and then in part three I will be focusing on the software side of it so that will be a clean installation of Windows, install all of the drivers for my computer and the new SSD and then I'll go ahead and install the programs that I frequently use such as my editing software and things like Microsoft Office and things like that. Basically the software side of it. So now I'm going to come close to the camera because I've actually got this SSD to show you. This is my old SSD. As you can see I have written dead on it. It is a Samsung 840 Evo 120GB in size and it is dead as you can see there. This was my old OS drive but ever since about the middle of last week it died on me. Or I should say it's dying. It hasn't quite died yet, the computer still recognises it, but it is definitely showing signs of, uh, well, a dying SSD. Now the way I determined this drive to be dying on me was because it was showing the symptoms of a dying SSD. Now this was my OS drive, so my Windows was running off this, which did also mean it wasn't really an easy diagnosis because I couldn't just remove it from the system and continue running Windows, but the symptoms my computer was showing regarding the failure of an SSD or just a storage device in general, my computer was freezing, it was crashing, it was stuttering, and when I say that they were happening to my computer. I didn't mean they were happening under demanding tasks. The computer wasn't under any load when it was showing those symptoms. It was simply showing those symptoms the moment I opened up a program such as File Explorer uh, because this was my OS drive so the computer was needing to read off this drive in order to open File Explorer and when File Explorer opened the, the computer stuttered. It sort of lagged and froze whatever you want to call it. I was having just random crashing with absolutely nothing running at all on the computer, just the operating system sat at the desktop and the computer would just crash. There was no obvious signs to the crashing, but now I know it's this drive, it is obvious because that is one of the signs of a failing drive. Uh, and the final way on how I could tell this drive was failing was because I ran a speed test on this SSD. Now when this SSD was new, it was looking at speeds of around 540 megabytes per second, which is, well, pretty top end for a SATA 6 SSD. But when I suspected this drive of failing, I went and ran a speed test and I was getting 40 megabytes per second. So when it was working, it was 540 and when it was failing, it was 40 megabytes per second. So obviously, this drive has something wrong with it because another symptom of a failing SSD are just speeds that are slow compared to what the SSD was able to run at when it was new. And now the final thing that to me confirmed that this drive was dead or dying was because the moment I removed this drive from my system and actually reinstalled the OS on a known good working hard drive, my system was working flawlessly. Didn't freeze, didn't hiccup, didn't slow down or anything like that. So I removed this from my computer and suddenly all of those issues just disappeared. Now for those wondering if it could be software related, before I went ahead and reinstalled the OS on a hard drive, I did do a fresh installation of Windows on this drive and the symptoms were still there. It was still freezing, crashing, stuttering, whatever you want to call it. It was still happening even with a fresh installation on this drive. But as I've just said, I have removed this from my system, obviously because I'm holding it here. And at the moment, my computer is just running Windows off a hard drive and it has worked flawlessly ever since I've reinstalled Windows on that hard drive, no stuttering or anything like that. So the replacement SSD that I purchased was this. This is a Samsung 970 Evo NVMe M.2 SSD and it is 500 gigabytes in size. The main reason why I got the 500 gigabyte version is because that way I will be able to create two partitions on this drive. I'll be able to create an OS partition and to that partition I will install the OS. And then the second partition will be my programs partition which is basically going to be every other program that's not related to the OS uh, that I will then install on that second partition and that means I will only have one drive in my system which is this M.2 drive. 
The next thing I bought for the SSD was this. This is a little EK Waterblocks NVMe heatsink and this is simply to put on the SSD. Now this SSD does feature VNAN flash memory which is these chips here and that's basically where your data is stored. Now they can get quite hot under heavy load so I've got a heatsink to stop them from overheating but I am also aware that VNAN flash chips actually work better when they are warm so hopefully this little heatsink can keep the drive in between like the too hot and the too cold margins to where it can run to its maximum performance. And now the final thing I have purchased was a Akasa was an Akasa PWM fan extension cable. So now I have showed you the hardware that I've purchased and explained my reasoning behind purchasing it. I shall now jump go to me unboxing the hardware. So these are the components I've got. I'll start off simple with the cable. We'll get onto the SSD and the SSD's heatsink later. This is just a fan extension cable because my current fan's cable is not long enough. So let's just get straight into it. So yeah, all you do is simply, well what I'll be doing is plugging my fan into this end of the cable and then plugging this end of the cable into my motherboard. So that way the fan will have power and the fan will be controlled through the BIOS on the fan curve that I've set. So this is a Samsung 970 EVO NVMe M.2 drive which uses VNAN flash SSD technology and it's 500 gigabytes in size. So let's position it for the camera and then it slides out this way. And there is the SSD itself. So I must say, I wasn't really expecting this type of packaging. It's not like flimsy thin plastic, it's like firm plastic. And this, uh, this bottom section is nicely manufactured as well. It looks like this bit comes off, and it does. I don't want to take the SSD out yet, I'll move on to that in a minute. But then underneath the SSD tray we have the little booklet that comes with the SSD. So this is the installation guide and the warranty statements. And as you can see, the book is in fact sealed shut. So that is what is under the SSD. We'll just put that back on, move that to one side. And then here we have the actual SSD itself. I'm not sure what form factor this is, because I know M.2 drives have different like lengths and different form factors, and I'm not 100% up to date on the different types of form factor. But what I do know is that this heatsink is compatible with uh, this form factor. That's one thing I did make sure of. On the back, it's just, well, a PCB and a sticker, because all of the chips and little capacitors and resistors and stuff are on this side of the PCB as I've already shown you and as you can again see there. So yeah, this is the, the SSD, 500 gigabytes. And now let's unbox the EK Waterblocks M.2 NVMe heatsink. Oh, that went well, didn't it? Uh, but I've chosen the black one. The main reason why I've chosen the black one is because the SSD is black and my motherboard is black and my RAM is black. So I've basically got like a black theme build, so I thought I'd continue the theme with both the black PCB and the black heatsink just so it all blends in really. So yes, let's unbox this. Right, where's my signature unboxing scissor? Yeah, this really does need sharpening. How does... oh, that goes that way. Envelope openers are really useful for opening awkward boxes like this. So what I have in here, if I turn that around for the camera, oh, it's sort of half rolled out. These are the mounting brackets to mount it to the SSD. Now these are the thermal pads to put on the SSD. Of course they are longer than the SSD, you'll need to cut them down to size. And if you look at the side of them there, there are two different thicknesses. There's a thing that's probably like a one millimeter and a half millimeter, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, what we have here is a little sort of how to layer everything with the heat sinks and the thermal pads. So on here I put the thinner thermal pad on the side of the SSD that doesn't have any chips on. And then I put the thicker thermal pad on top of the PCB uh, covering the memory chips and things like that. And as you can see here, 
the the thicker thermal pad is one millimeter and the thinner one is 0.5 millimeters so i was correct with the sizes that i just gave and now what we have here is the actual heatsink itself i shall just show you the ssd through the packaging because i don't want to get any oils or anything on the heat sink from my skin and uh, when I do go to install it I will be wearing gloves but I don't have those with me right now which is why I'm going to leave it in the packaging but yes you get two parts of the heat sink you can't see it very well in the packaging but as it shows on here there's the top heat sink which is a bit with the fins on and the EK logo and then there's the back plate heat sink that goes on the bottom of the PCB and then you have these little clips to put around and clip it on like that. So that has been the unboxing of the different components that I have got for this SSD upgrade. Now I have shown you which components I'm going to be using in this upgrade and now I have also unboxed those components. It does mean that is the end of part one. So if you have enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you haven't, give it a dislike. Also consider subscribing to see future uploads that I will upload on this channel. But that's it for this video, so thank you for watching.